Joining us again all the way from God's own country, the Bahamas, is a man who has taken the torch of his late father, Miles Monroe, to new heights. His voice is raising a new generation of entrepreneurs through the Mel Conference and various global projects. Miles Monroe Jr., thank you for staying with us. My pleasure. So earlier on, we, we uh, got into your world a little, mm -hmm. uh, into how you see the world. But where you're at now with the conferences you do, uh, are you... You, you pastoring and you know doing revivals and conferences like your father did, or is is it slightly different? I, I would think it's slightly different. I'm not. I would. I don't consider myself a pastor, um, but I love um, speaking. I love motivating people. I love being uh, a, a benchmark for people to want to aspire to be because of the things that you know I've I've learned and experienced and I've been through. You know, I think I can be uh, a help. To, to a lot of um, other individuals, especially the, the younger generation. Mm -hmm. So my focus, our focus, you know, is to really inspire those that are coming after us because it's exactly what my, my dad did. He always used to say that we need to die empty and re, um, uh, re, reproduce ourselves in, in other individuals. And that's mm -hmm. how the legacy continues. So Let me ask, though, about that, that idea of dying empty. Is that really possible? Because, I mean, when, you're, when your parents passed, you're at least the schedule I knew of of your father just in Africa alone was extensive, so he still had a lot to give. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would think so, um, and I, I, I still do believe that, uh, but like I said, we're not, you know, Jesus is Lord, he's the owner of it all, so mm -hmm. we don't, I don't question uh, what, what happened or if, you know, he was finished and whatnot, but I knew, I, I know that because of what he left behind, um, it's still affecting so many other people. And there's, there's so much resources that we have that, that he has left, like the books that, that we still have, the uh, teachings that he left behind. We're, we're still producing, we're still putting out, and we're making them available through our, our, um, our organization, Monroe Global. So, you know, I think that, yes, I think he, he really died empty, and I think dying empty is, is definitely possible. Now, one of the interesting things that people wouldn't know about your father, I mean, there's loads, everyone feels like they know your father, but you, you sit there and you, there's a lot that you, that you know that people don't, don't know. Hurt. One of the things we know here at Turning Point is his generosity, mm -hmm. because he would leave us, like, books, mm -hmm. reams of books mm -hmm. to give away, and you were saying that you, your father did that all, all the time. time. Yes. Tell us about some of the, 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 the things he would do that most people don't know about in terms of his giving. Yeah, he, you know, like, like you said, he, he would give away books all the time. And, and he would allow people to plagiarize him, right? And the only, the only thing he used to say is, if you're going to copy, copy right. right? And that's, that's all he <laughs> asked for. He never wanted any uh, monetary uh, uh, reimbursements or anything like that. But, he was always but, but a giving for you, spirit. you're a businessman. Absolutely. So you, I, you run, I absolutely. mean, you're CEO of the, didn't, didn't that ever bring you at loggerheads like, listen, so, dad, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, so especially when I moved home, you know, mm -hmm. I started to, we started to have a lot more conversations like that. And mm -hmm. I, me explaining to him, like, I know you want to do this, but it doesn't make sense to do. Like, you can't just allow any and everybody to... Uh, just do what they want with your work. And you what know? would he say? Uh, and he, he got to a point where he started to understand it. So we were starting to make some changes in how we did things and, and, you know, just getting things documented as opposed to him just saying, yeah, you know, just do what you want and, and whatnot. So my business mind started to come into play and I used to start to give him scenarios like, you know, think about it like this or mm -hmm. look at it this way. And, you know, he started to understand that. Do you ever feel that the... Uh the nervousness of speaking to, because your, your father is supposed to, head, I mean, head of states at the drop of a pin. I know heads of countries who defer to him as counselor, as, as teacher. Uh, do, do you ever feel uh, nervous and inadequate to, to do that? Because you've taken over the, the reins of the organization with your sister. Right. Or do you feel, yep, yeah, let's go? I, I'm, I'm never nervous because I'm, the only thing that I speak about is what I know. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm never trying to be my father, uh, you know, because I can't. I, there's no way that I can fill his shoes. And he's always he, he taught my sister and I that the best story that we can tell is our own. Right. And I've, I've learned and seen learned and seen over the years that my story affects and it, it impacts a lot of people the same way my dad did. Right. Mm -hmm. But in, in my own way. So I'm, I'm always comfortable um, teaching or speaking on what I know and, and what I'm uh, what I've learned and experienced over the years. And, you know, the lessons that I've learned from him uh, through the years have really helped me 
in articulating, you know, what I need to say, but in my own way. And that's what the Mel Conference is about. You know, it's about everyone has a story and no one can tell your story the way that you can, right? And that from the perspective that you can tell it. So it's providing that platform for, you know, other people to understand and relate to the stories that everyone uh, has and has developed in their personal life. Leadership is a painful thing, and, and you can you can speak of that mm -hmm. personally. I mean, we're, we're only familiar with the bit that's very public, the, the passing of your parents. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and beyond that, the others who were around them, mm -hmm. who you had a relationship with. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the, the pain? Have you stopped crying? I don't think you ever stop, right? Because there are times, you, you have your days where or weeks where you're good, but there's always those times where you're... You know, for me personally, it's um, I'm in a moment where I just I'm not sure what decision I want to make. And you, usually it was in those times that I was able to go to my dad and get some advice and opinions and stuff. So it, it's still it's still difficult. I still find myself uh, crying sometimes and being depressed. But, you know, we we, we have to understand that life goes on and, and we must continue. I can't allow myself to uh, get stuck in any position uh, based on any circumstance that I'm going through. You know, yeah. everything that we experience in life, it's, it's, it's done to us to develop as individuals and progress as individuals. So I just take it all, uh, take it all in as a, a learning experience and knowing that I'm being fine-tuned for that next stage of my life. Now, I wonder if you can help us, because someone watching thinks, and they think, well, it's all right for you, Miles Jr. You had the great Miles Monroe yeah coaching you uh, and you have his legacy so it's easier for you for someone who's there where they they're a place where they've known loss mm -hmm. either loss of family or the, the ministries somehow mm -hmm. lost or, or or the career is just upside down these are the things you deal with I wonder if you could speak a word of encouragement to them or, or whatever you feel in your heart to speak to them uh, to encourage them. sure you, you know there is this uh the, the currency of, of this kingdom that we, we live in, it's, it's faith. There's nothing that we can do without faith. And I think faith is so important for us as, as citizens of, of, of the kingdom. And there's, there's this thing that comes along with faith where we just trust God. We, we trust everything that we have been doing, everything that we've learned. And, you know, I said something uh, a few days after my parents passed in, in my address to, to the public. I, I said, you know, God may not explain himself because he really doesn't have to because he's, he's a sovereign God, but he will reveal himself at some point. So, mm. you know, whatever you're going through, trust the process, trust that you're not alone. God is there. And if he's given you a vision for your life, then he has given you everything that you need to bring that vision to pass. Miles, thank you so much. God may not explain himself, but he, he will, will reveal, reveal himself. himself. Absolutely. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you, man. I appreciate it.